this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram and I'm checking out a 2021 Jeep Cherokee in the 80th Anniversary Edition. This vehicle is sitting on 235.50 Bridgestone tires wrapped around 19 inch alloy wheels with a granite crystal finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Bright White Clear Coat. And it's just a kind of a basic white, nothing really special about it. But it is a nice color, especially when you're trying to show off features on the vehicle. So the different features pop out on white colors. So the exterior badging is a granite crystal. So you can see the Jeep emblem is granite crystal. The grill has granite crystal here on the outside. You can see that portion is granite crystal. The in inner portion is a flat black or a matte black. Now here at the bottom, it's mostly matte black, but it also has the granite crystal here in the bottom, here in the center portion. It's kind of hard to make it out from a distance, but up close you can kind of tell. This little bubble right here in the center, typically that is for your radar adaptive cruise control system, but it is a radar sensor. In this particular case, it does not have the radar adaptive cruise control. It has a forward collision warning system that utilizes that sensor. Just, so just because it has that doesn't necessarily mean the, ha the, the vehicle has the adaptive cruise control. The bezels around the fog lights are also that uh, granite crystal and then the matte black there in the center port. Now the exterior lights on this vehicle, you can see there are black bezels right in here for the headlights. So the exterior lights uh, here in the front are LEDs. So you have LED fog lights, headlights, turn signals, daytime running lights, all LEDs. The headlights are in a projector for your low and high beams. It's a, a bi-LED projector headlight system. And the fog lights are in a reflector housing. Looking at the profile, uh, you can see that the handles are body colored. The lower portion of the vehicle is a matte black around the base, this, this plastic right here around the wheel wells and across the sides, all the way including the rear bumper. Also you have that same matte black uh, for the pillars and around the, the glass here. The roof rails are a granite crystal and the upper portion of the side mirrors are also a granite crystal. The badging here on the side says 80th anniversary Jeep and that's also granite crystal. This is what the key looks like. It's a full proximity system uh, designed to where you can keep the key in your pocket and use the vehicle 100%. It also has lock unlock, the ability to remote start the vehicle, raise the power lift gate, and a panic button. There's also a physical key here on the inside when you need it. Let's go ahead and push the panic button. As long as you have the key with you, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of either the driver or passenger door, you can push this button to lock it. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle. It senses your hand position, it senses the key within on the outside of the door, and allows you access the vehicle, it unlocks the doors. Now you can have, there's a setting to where you can have it just unlock this door, or all the doors when you do this. There's also a physical key location here on the driver's side only. You also have the ability to, when the vehicle's running, get out of the vehicle with the key and lock the doors and leave the vehicle secure with the key with you. So this is a great feature that a lot of vehicles don't have on the market. There's heaters on the, underneath these windshield wipers. So it keep, you can release those basically in the winter time if they get frozen. And there's also a little Jeep climbing here on the corner of the windshield. Here's the inside of the passenger side door. Now it's mostly black interior, but it does have some accents. For one thing, and it has some contrast stitching here, but it also has two different forms of accents. So they, on the window sticker, it says 
gunmetal or light tungsten. So I'm assuming that this is the gunmetal and this is the light tungsten. So you can let me know in the comments which one you think is which. But we'll see that throughout the vehicle. So this is an enclosed uh, handle so you can utilize that as a pocket. There's a small pocket there as well and then a bottle holder and storage space there at the bottom. The soft touch surfaces are up here so this is kind of like a soft synthetic nerf type material and it continues all the way down to here. This is a vinyl type material. It's all soft touch here and here. It's quite soft. And then the bottom of the door is a hard plastic. It does have a power seat here for the passenger. You can go up and down, forward and back and all that stuff. It also has a four-way lumbar adjustment, which is nice. That's a lot of features here for a passenger side. Now these are leather seats, leather trim seats, and they have this uh, microfiber cloth here on the edge where it contacts with that hard plastic to give it a little bit better du durability. You can see it's a uh, solid leather here, and then the perforations are there in the middle. And there's this little spot here in the middle right here, in the very center, that's solid again with the contrast stitching as well. Really impressive looking seats. You open the door of this vehicle and there's a lot of just things to please your eye, I guess you can say. It's just a nice vehicle in general. Especially for the price range with a V6 and all that. Okay, so it has a net pocket right in here on the side of the console uh, with the 80th anniversary it has these Berber carpets that hook in place there's your leg room the glove compartment is kind of like a little shelf and it goes way back in there it has a little 80th anniversary emblem here on the dash looking cool and there's those two metallic accents there that you'll decide which is which. Soft touch dash. This is a hard touch down here. The opening here in the front is quite is really nice. We're just wide up in space. But check out the back. Same deal. Um, of course, it's smaller here at the bottom, but it swings up. There's not a lot of stuff to get in your way. It doesn't really impede your headroom or anything. Um, and also, the swing of the door is almost at a 90 degree angle. So it's a nice, just wide open space. Uh, having a wide swing on the rear door really helps out with the smaller area that you have to get in. The inside of the back door is similar styling as the front except for you have hard touch surfaces here and here, and the only soft touch is around your arm, here and here. So you have the same styling here in the back seat, and it's basically a bench seat. Uh, it does have the armrests and cup holders here in the center. And I like the way they have the little bumps, these little dimples right here to allow for different size cups in here because when it doesn't have it, when you put a bottle or something, it waddles around, it's really annoying. So that kind of takes up the slack. And these seats have the perforation in the center, the contrast stitching, very similar styling as the front. They're basically identical, except for this is a bench seat. On the back of both front seats has the, the pocket here. There's a little Jeep tag here on the sides of the front seats there, looking pretty cool. Here in the center, there's climate control vents. Uh, there's also USB charge ports. So there's U regular USB and USB-C charge ports, as well as a uh, outlet here like you find in your house an AC outlet does have a hump in the center not super huge but it is there 
and the leg room is fantastic. The seats are extremely comfortable in this vehicle. So even here in the back, getting in and out is easy, but also once you get in, there's plenty of leg room and it's just a comfortable soft seat. The fuel door is here on the passenger side and it's a capless design. You don't have to worry about a cap. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, uh, there's a little antenna, just kind of like a little tiny mast antenna there in the very center, looking cool. And there is a third brake light here at the top of the glass, here in that tiny spoiler. There is a rear wiper. And the tail lights are all LEDs, looking nice. There's turn signal indicators on the side mirrors. Turn signals are LEDs. The backup camera is well integrated right here in the very center of the vehicle. There's parking sensors across the back. There's also a subtle, there's one of the parking sensors here. And there's a subtle uh, accent that kind of separates the, uh, the matte black bumper. Two visible chrome exhaust tips. Really visible. They want to make sure that you can see them really good. And the exhaust actually does flow through them. To open the power lift gate, you can of course use the key or there's a button a little bit to the right of center. So the backup camera is in the very center, just a little bit to the right, right in here. Underneath this P, there's an electronic switch. You just push it and it opens up for you. So if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this will be your cargo space, which is quite a bit. There's a light on both sides, so it helps eliminate shadows at nighttime. There's some bag holders here on the side. You can also put a net pocket, a shade in place here as well. Those are options. And there's tie downs on all four corners. A little cubby here on the right side. On the left side, you see there's another light. There's also a 12 volt power supply, and then you see it has a key on it that lets you know that it turns on and off with the ignition. More bag holders, and another cubby here on this side. You can fold these seats down. It's a 60 40 split, so you can add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space, or you can fold down all, of, all of the seats if you need that extra space and have a wide open cargo area. Now this load floor, uh, you can change the height. So we can lift it up, pull it, and drop, it drops down, push it in, and then you can push it down, like so. So now you have a lower load floor. And right in here, you might be wondering what this is, that is a funnel, uh, just in case you need to use the capless uh, fuel door, the capless fuel inlet uh, will not you, you won't be able to use a gas can unless you have that funnel with you. So that funnel is in that little secret location. So this lower load floor just gives you more height. It also kind of acts as a tray. So you can see the sides there. Um, so if you put something in here, it kind of like keeps it more contained. You can also lift this up and there's the spare tire. Now this, this, this right here is, you can flip it over and use the other side. You can take it out. Um, but there's no like when you're trying to access the spare tire, you're gonna have to find a spot for this There's no place to like you can like try to push it up and you see it just kind of there's no really good spot to put it There's no it doesn't lift up and stay up. So um, That's something that they can improve on but there's your spare tire and tools basically a steel rim donut and There's a little bit of space around the tire in case you need to add some stuff in there Lowering the power lift gate, there's a button here on the left side. Instead of having up up high above your head on the lift gate, they have it here on the side. So you push that, 
it beeps at you and then it starts coming down. It gives you a second to get out of the way. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, you can be in your bag, in a pocket, sitting in a cup holder, whatever. As long as it's inside, put your foot on the brake, hold it, and push this button to start it up. You don't have to hold the button, you just push it. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Floor mat hooks in place, keeping it straight for you. And it's a Berber carpet, with a little, little bit of protection right there. There's your accelerator and brake pedal. Nice footrest here on the left side. It has a little tiny bit of protection, but not much. But it's a pretty good size footrest. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch a little bit to the right of center, so it's basically where this P is. Follow that down right in here. Just reach in and squeeze it, and it lifts, it releases the hood, and then you can lift up. And it get to a certain point and it goes the rest of the way up by itself. You can see there's the latch here. You squeeze that and it releases on the top under the hood, which is interesting. So it has an insulation here on the underside of the hood. This is an aluminum hood as well. There's a seal across the front. Also the rear hatch is also aluminum. So here's the engine compartment. You can see a seal across the back uh, and there's a lot of covers here. So there's a big cover on the engine. There's a cover here on the very front. Insulated battery here on the right side. There's also insulation. Not the complete firewall is insulated, but it does have quite a bit of insulation there. So this is a front wheel drive vehicle with a V6. So this is the front of the front of the engine right here. And this is the rear of the engine. And you have three cylinders here and three cylinders there. The transmission is over there next to the battery below that, that area. So it's a 3.2 liter Pentastar V6 with a nine speed ZF automatic transmission. And you can see a little bit here of the engine, but most everything is covered up. And I'll put all these specs, dimensions, measurements, all that stuff in the description. You can look through all the specs of the vehicle. The rear view mirrors are heated side mirrors. They also have this little triangle in them. That is the blind spot indicator for the blind spot and rear cross traffic alert system. So that'll illuminate on the appropriate side when, when it's activated. So the inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So there's the door lock, power windows. The front two are automatic, one touch up and down. There's quite fast. Seems a little bit faster coming down. There's the side mirror controls. You just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad power seat for the driver since the passenger side has so many features the driver side basically has the same features here to the left of the steering column there's a little storage pocket right here it's like a little tiny glove compartment and then you have your headlight controls with automatic turn your headlights on parking light and off Fog lights can be turned on by pushing this little center piece. Dimmer switch for your interior gauges as well as ambient lighting and the ability to open up the power lift gate. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column. Not a huge amount of articulation up and down, but it does have that capability. And then you lock it in place here. Sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. Uh, I have the seat all the way back and all the way down. And I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea of the leg room. So I could actually drive like this. I could probably pull it up a little bit more. Um, but plenty of knee room here and leg room. So this is a little bit far back, but I could drive like this. But I probably would pull it slightly forward. So it has a leather wrap steering wheel. And nice and soft 
very good thickness it has the stitching there in the center part looking really nice and it's just kind of a traditional round steering wheel there's no flat bottom there's no big bolster sticking out or anything like that just a really comfortable and easy to use steering wheel now it has buttons here on the on the front here but on the back there's also if you're not familiar there's an up and down and a center button there so it's a toggle so up and down and then a center button here on the right is your volume for your radio the center button here on the right is your uh, audio source on the left side on the back is up and down change through your radio station or your tracks depending on what you're playing and then the center button is for the presets on your radio only so here on the front you have cruise control here on the right side you turn it on you can set it with either one of these resume and cancel it's very simple if you had adaptive cruise control your settings would be down here on the left side your bluetooth so you can answer hang up and then you have a very advanced voice recognition system on this vehicle it has a whole booklet uh, with commands and stuff and once you you know how to use it and you um, you know train the vehicle with your voice and all that stuff it kind of learns your voice over time it's very it's amazing what you could do just uh, barking out commands if you're if you like doing that kind of thing you don't have to do it of course and then this this okay and the arrows around here corresponds with the screen between the gauges we'll get to that in just a minute windshield wiper controls are here on the right side turn signals here on the left side it also has your dimmer switch for your high beams so here's the gauges and it has physical gauges on the left and right so you can see the rpms there on the left the tachometer and the speedometer there on the right side but here in the very center is a screen so the screen has more information so on the bottom left now this is customizable on the bottom left is your engine coolant temperature on the right is your your fuel gauge the top right is your range and on the le top left also has the range because somebody set that like that but you can customize you can put other information um, there if you want outside temperature that kind of stuff um, or nothing whatever you want to do you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show right here and then it has a big digital speedometer there in the center part so if we want to change that so we can kind of get quite a bit of information here so using the OK and the arrows on the steering wheel, like I showed you, uh, we can scroll down. So you can see that the first one is speedometer. It's part of a menu system, number one. Going down to number two is vehicle info. We can scroll to the right on vehicle info and get temperatures and pressures. Quite a bit of information about the vehicle. Scrolling down again takes us to driver assist. Uh, this talks about, this is letting you know about the lane, sis, lane sense system and it's off right now so it lets you know what features are on so if you had more like the adaptive cruise control or whatever it would show up here fuel economy uh, you have two of these so scrolling to the right you can go through both of them and you can reset these independently so it gives you an average it gives you a range and it gives you a, and this one it shows you the current but scrolling to the right this one does not give you that current uh, just gives you the range so depending on if you want that constantly changing in front of you as you're driving and you can reset them independently just like the trip so you have trip a trip b and it has the the distance the average miles per gallon and the time so you can reset those independently the stop start feature turns off the engine while you're sitting at an idle um, this is the status of that system audio just whatever your radio is doing Messages will show up here uh, And then this is where you can set up the screen. So let's go ahead and go in here upper left. Let's change that to um, Let's see here Let's change it to Outside temperature click that so now it shows the outside temperature instead of both of them being range All right, so you can you can see you can customize that um, so you can upper right you have defaults odometer um, you can favorite some gear display you can customize that all right and I scroll down again it takes me back to the digital speedometer here right, we saw the start start button and 
here is the uh, the center portion. Now here at the very top is a storage compartment. So you can put some stuff. Close that up. And there's a touch screen here. This is the Uconnect system. And the clarity, you notice there's not much of a glare here. The clarity of the colors, the contrast ratio. The, the screen is fantastic, and the way you use it is really easy too. You use these icons here across the bottom. So this first one is radio, so it gives us album art. We have AM, FM, satellite radio. We have presets there at the top. We can adjust the audio here. Um, the next one is media, so that's separate from your your uh, the radio. All right, so there's nothing connected right now, but this is different audio sources. So we have USB 1, USB 2, auxiliary input, and of course Bluetooth under media. Uh, the next one is climate. Now there's some buttons below to adjust the climate, but you can also get uh, adjust it here on the screen. So it shows a driver and passenger temperatures, which, which you can sync right here. Front and rear defrosters, um, recirculate the air, where you want the air to blow. You also have a heated seat and heated steering wheel controls there, and then your fan speed right in here. The next icon is apps. So these are all the icons that you can have down here if you'd, want, if you'd like. Uh, you can actually look at the backup camera. You can go into audio settings, um, your seat controls, uh, as far as your heat. You have a compass. Look at that compass, it looks pretty cool. We can look at the backup camera. Um, so that's all that this one has. So let's say we wanted to um, so let's look at the controls first. So this is the heated seat, high and low, two-stage heated steering wheel. We can look at the backup camera here, and then it goes into settings, which is basically a shortcut there. So let's say we wanted to put the backup, let's see, we'll take the backup camera. Well, I accidentally clicked it. Anyways, let's try that again. We'll take it, press it, hold it, and then move it down here, and put it right there. So now we can replace icons down here with the ones within the apps menu. All right, the next one is your phone. You have to pair a phone. Once you do, you have access to your phone book, recent calls, you can dial, you can send and receive messages. Uh, there's favorites here at the very top. Um, you can also transfer it back to your cell phone if you need to. And then last is your settings in which you can set up the vehicle when you first get it or customize it to your liking. So you can see it just has these icons across the bottom. You can customize the icons here and it's just very easy to go through and use the vehicle. And it has these shortcuts, you know. You, you, like say, that, like in the climate, it has a shortcut to here. And then here has a shortcut to settings. Um, so it's really cool uh, the way they designed the, the, uh, the touch screen in this vehicle. Okay, so down here, um, the parking sensors, you can turn those off, default will be on. Here's your four-way flashers, and then this is your lane sense. So you can turn that on or off. This is off, so this is the off light, just like that is the off light. All right, you have a physical volume tuned through the stations here. You can mute the radio. The traction control is on, default is on, but you can turn it off here. Same thing with the stop-start feature. You can always turn the screen off as well if it's just distracting you. And then you have climate control, uh, fan speed, temperature, um, and then different options here, front and rear defroster. So you don't always have to go into the screen to adjust the climate control. It does have some very useful buttons here. All right, there's a little storage area there. And it does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So if you need to plug in your cell phone, there's a good place to put it there. There's an auxiliary input and, and USB inputs, 12 volt power supply. A little storage space there. Put some change or whatever. Okay, so here's your shifter. It's pretty big, so it kind of gets in the way a little bit. If it was smaller, I think it'd be a little bit better. Or maybe a push button. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse. Two things will happen. The backup camera is one. And it has these active guidelines. You turn the steering wheel, it'll turn these, those lines. Also, your parking sensors are also enabled. And not only does it give you an audible warning, but it also gives you a visual of where the object is behind you. 
All right. There's neutral, drive, and then you can adjust the gears manually by going here to the left and bump it like a ratchet shifter. And you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show here. You can always put it in drive by just bumping it back to the right. There's an electronic parking brake. Um, so you pull it to engage it and it has a little light indicating that it's on. It engages the rear wheels. To release it, you have to hold the brake and then push it down. There's some more cup holders. A little place to put a pen or something here. And I like the way these, these pockets have this little, this little rubber bottom that you can take out and clean and put back in. Okay, so this is the armrest. It's nice, very soft, super soft. It has a stitching there on the ends. Um, you might be able to share it with the passenger. It's kind of small for that, though. And it has two compartments in it. The first one is this top small compartment here. You can put some stuff. Wires can go in and out of this compartment right here. The second one, you lift it up. But the bottom, there's two switches here, top and bottom here. And this is the larger compartment, compartment and it has a USB um, input here as well. And wires can go in and out of this compartment, just like the other side. Rear view mirror, it's an auto dim rear view mirror. And you can turn that feature on or off right here with this button. Right above that is some lights. Um, so you got this light. These are just standard bulbs. Though. I wish it was LEDs. So you have some reading lights there. Um, and you have, this is for the, uh, the sunroof. The shade and the sunroof. We'll get to that in a minute. Place to put your shades up here. And it's, I guess it's pretty good size. It's like a felt lining. Um, it's kind of like glued on there or something. The visors. Uh, it's a cloth material just like the headliner. And it has a little clip here. Has mirrors and lights. Home Link garage door opening control is here as well. And it slides out. Okay, so the sunroof has a shade that covers 100% of the light. And it is huge. It's a panoramic sunroof. And let's go ahead and open up the shade. When I push the button the first time, it'll go back right there. Push it again and it goes the rest of the way back. Check it out. The back panel, uh, glass panel is fixed, the front portion uh, moves. So if we wanna tilt it, there's a button right here on the left side, push it, and it tilts it a little bit. Not a huge amount. And then uh, we can also slide it back. Push it again, it goes a little bit further back. It goes all the way back there. Okay, so looking at the visibility there in the back, uh, you can see there's quite a, the pillars in the back are quite big, um, but it does have a lot of windows as well. Um, so it does have technology like the, the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, parking sensors, backup camera, all that stuff to help out with the visibility. But you can see it does have, depending on your cargo space, I mean, cargo stuff, and then, of course, passenger, people in the car, is going to limit your visibility as well. So let's look at the window sticker here. So it starts off with the name and the year of the vehicle. Then it goes to your base price, interior and exterior colors, engine transmission, standard equipment. Continues down here. Interior features are listed. Then it goes to the optional equipment. So this one, uh, in this area, you'll see prices next to each uh, package. So this is the customer preferred package 26U, which happens to be the uh, Jeep 80th anniversary edition. That's 2180. Continues on the next column, lists out all the features of that. Then it goes into the next one, a convenience group, um, comfort and convenience group. And then the compact spare tires, an additional charge destination charge and then a package savings and then you have a total price here that's the msrp there's the warranty information fuel economy 
safety ratings. And then this is where it's actually made. So you can see it's mostly made in the United States. Anyways, there you have it. 2021 Jeep Cherokee in the 80th, 80th anniversary edition. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Van Underwood, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Whiteville, North Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.